In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us sing together our gathering hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, hymn 365, found in your bulletin. Jesus Christ is risen today, alleluia. Our triumphant holy day, Alleluia. Put in once upon the cross, Alleluia. Suffer to redeem a loss, Alleluia. Of praise, then let us sing, Alleluia, unto Christ our heavenly King, Alleluia, who endured the cross and grave, Alleluia, sinners to redeem and save. <laughs> but the pains which he endured, Alleluia, <laughs> our salvation hath procured, Alleluia. <laughs> now above the sky he's king, Alleluia. <laughs> Where the angels ever sing, Alleluia. Sing we to our God above, Alleluia. Praise eternal as his love, Alleluia. Praise him, all you heavenly host, Alleluia. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. What did you say? What? What did you say? Oh, okay. Let us hear our first reading from Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah this Jesus whom you crucified. 
Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Thanks God. God. Let us sing together the psalm for the day, Psalm 116, verses 1 through 4, then 12 through 19. That's a little confusing, but it's, it's correct in your bulletin. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I call. The cords of death entangled me, the anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people, in the courts of the Lord's house. In the midst of you, O Jerusalem, Hallelujah. A reading so our second first, reading from First Peter. A reading from First Peter. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without de defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, <clears throat> not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Now, on that same day when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. And that's what we're clinging to. Clinging to that is why we are here, gathered on this Zoom call or watching on YouTube. We have to cling to that and hear it again because it's so hard to hear it. Dear friends, we're going through this global trauma. As difficult as our distancing and our isolation are, as bad as the economic effects are, that's not even the whole of it. We're losing people. We lost Janet on Tuesday. A terrible blow for her family. And then I turn on the news and I realize there have been 54,000 deaths from the novel coronavirus in the United States alone. We have lost nearly as many lives as we did in the Vietnam War. Given the scale of it, I, I can't think about much else when I can manage to think at all. It's the primary thought in everyone's mind, the disaster, the disappointment, the damage. It's easy to imagine the tone of the two disciples of Jesus today because we say with them, we had hoped. 
We had hoped for a glorious spring after a weirdly warm winter, a spring of new beginnings and new projects. We had hoped to do some traveling. We had hoped to spend some time with family and friends. We had hoped that our investments would be stable or at least maybe there. We had hoped to be in the assembly with fellow Christians. We had hoped to see a wedding. We had hoped not to need to have graveside funerals. We had hoped all this and more. You know, all those hopes and dreams, some small, some big. But here we are on the way. Cleopas and the other disciple, let's call them Sue. They're on the way to Emmaus, which may or may not be a real place, and it doesn't matter. One commentator points out that Emmaus literally means the forsaken people. They had hoped, and it didn't happen. We can feel the grief dripping off these two as they walk on the road. And suddenly Jesus, and really that could be the whole takeaway this morning, suddenly Jesus, what on earth is Jesus doing on this road? Apparently he wants to know what they're talking about, which is absurd. What else is there to talk about? Nothing else is happening but this disaster. This one who they do not recognize somehow is not held down by their grief and preoccupation with the losses, even though he was the one who was pierced and whipped and abandoned and crucified and died. So they tell him the story, his story ending with, but we had hoped. How foolish we are. Jesus moves from curious traveler to teacher in a heartbeat. He interprets to them all the things about himself in the scriptures. They had hoped that their people would be saved, and they had a clear and wrong idea about what that would look like. We don't know exactly what this Bible study did or said, other than that it began with Moses. So the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, and it went through all the prophets and the scriptures. Because of Peter's sermon in Jerusalem, which Luke reports as being about a month and a half after this event, we can conclude the Psalms would have been mentioned. And it's starting to sound as though Jesus took them through the readings of the Easter Vigil. And then they come to the town and they beg Jesus to stay with them because he was going to just keep walking. But for their sake, he stays with them, and he takes bread, and he gives thanks, and he breaks it, and he gives it to them, and suddenly, Jesus, they know him, and he's gone like that. It's Jesus. He's alive. Our hopes haven't come true as we thought, but maybe something even more amazing is happening. Run, we have to go tell the others, and back to Jerusalem, back to the community, which is all a buzz. Because Mary's report and Peter's report are making the rounds, and they tell them this new story as well. And what we don't see in today's reading is that they are all talking about these things when again, suddenly, Jesus, he's there and says, peace be with you. Dear friends, in this time where we do not gather because we want everyone to be there when we do. In this time where we have all altered our lives for the sake of those who might be spared or saved, it's hard to hear this text if we read it as though it's about the Lord's Supper or the sanctuary or the gathered assembly of the people and the disciples that we miss. So read it differently this time. It's a story about people on the road. Where are we going? Where is all this taking us? Not to Emmaus. Not to despair. 
not to being forsaken, not to hopelessness. That's not where we're going, even if we feel like it is, even if we think it is. And the upper room, the sanctuary, Jerusalem is not the place either, not Asbury Park, not home, not sorrow, not the grave. This appearance of Jesus, or appearances, promise something that we have not expected. Suddenly Jesus, not because he was expected, but because he was needed. Not to give us what we had hoped, but to open our eyes and to set our hearts burning within us with new hopes and dreams and visions. And suddenly sorrowing people are met by Jesus on the way. Suddenly Jesus is there and then gone, and rather than eating, we run. Suddenly, as the stories are shared, Jesus is present. Cleopas and Sue aren't going to Emmaus or to Jerusalem. They're going to Jesus, who has come near and is already on the way with them. That is the promise God gives us today. Jesus comes near and goes with us, even if our eyes, for now, are kept from recognizing him. Jesus comes near and asks us what things weigh on our hearts. Jesus hears our fears and our dashed hopes and our shattered dreams. And Jesus, perhaps seriously, perhaps playfully, points out all the things about him in the scriptures. We can hear him whisper, haven't you read? In the beginning, God. We can hear him talk about the Israelites dancing on the safe side of the sea and about Jonah praising God from the belly of the fish. We can hear him talking about a valley of dry bones and the spirit of God putting breath into them and about a new heart and a new spirit being given to God's people. These stories are his story and he joins us now on the road because he is the way the road and the home, the bread and the word, the journey and the life, the beginning and the end. Dear friends, we had hoped other things. Let us now hope in the risen one, because he is with us. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Amen. Let us sing together hymn 374, Day of Arising. Day of arising, Christ on the roadway, unknown companion walks with his own. When they invite him, as fades the first day, and bread is broken, Christ is made known. When we are walking, Doubtful and dreading, blinded by sadness, slowness of heart. Yet Christ walks with us, ever awaiting our invitation, stay, do not part. Lo, I am with you, Jesus has spoken. This is Christ's promise, this is Christ's sign. When the church gathers, when bread is broken, there Christ is with us in bread and wine. Christ our companion, hope for the journey, bread of compassion, open our eyes. Grant us your vision, set our hearts burning, that all creation with you may rise.
uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection. We join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For those who, whose hearts are fervent with love for your gospel, that they are empowered to tell the story of your love in their lives and to show hospitality in response to this love, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the diverse natural world, for jungles, prairies, forests, valleys, mountains, and for all the wild and endangered animals who call these spaces homes, that they are nurtured and protected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our broken systems we have inherited and that we continue to perpetuate, forgive us. Restrain the nations from fighting over limited resources. Redeem us from the cycles of scarcity and violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who call upon your healing name, give rest. Stay with us and walk with all those who are hungry, friendless, despairing, and desiring healing in body and spirit, especially Bruce, Bill, Sue, Roberta, Dorothy, Bob, Nancy, Bonnie, Emma, Ted, Bruce, and Teresa. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the faith-forming ministries of this congregation and the whole church. For those preparing for baptism, first communion, confirmation, and membership. For those who participate in Sunday school and adult education. Guide and inspire learners of every age and every ability. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of Janet Clark as they mourn, and all those members of the family and the friends of the over 54,000 people taken by the coronavirus that they may be given peace and comfort and consolation and that Christ may walk with them wherever they go. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Create in our hearts a yearning to rest in your promise of eternal and resurrected life. Give us thankful hearts for those who have died even as we look forward to the hope of new life with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Dear friends, I'm so grateful for your presence here on this call and in prayer in the spirit throughout the week. And as I give thanks for you, I remember also to give thanks for your generosity. As you know, this is a dire time for many people in this congregation and in the world. This is our offering moment where we remember the importance of continuing to proclaim the good news, especially in the midst of crisis and disaster. For those of you who may not be aware or require a reminder, you can still mail checks to the church at Atonement Lutheran Church, which is 301, 308 First Avenue. I was about to give you my home address. 308 First Avenue, and that's in Asbury Park, New Jersey, 07712. You can also use the links below. You can sign up through uh, Vento to be a regular electronic giver. Or you can use the Give Plus app, which you can find in your app store to give to the church. And that is perhaps the easiest way for those of you who are more electronic in nature. All of that information should be in the description of this video. 
Let us prepare our hearts and minds to give thanks for the word and also be grateful in offering our whole lives to God. Thankful for each other, let us give thanks for God and God's mercy and God's good word. Let us sing, Be Not Afraid. We'll sing it through three times. Be not afraid, sing out for joy. Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out for joy. Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out for joy, Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out for joy, Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out for joy, Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid. Sing out for joy, Christ is risen, alleluia. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Most merciful Lord, we grieve that we cannot assemble to hear your word and receive your supper. We experience the weight of separation, and we long for conversation and consolation gathered as one body in you. Yet, O oh Lord Jesus, remind us of the bold and beautifully audacious woman who also could not touch your body, but dared in faith to grab hold of the hem of your garment, that she would be healed. Grant to us such boldness of faith, when we too may not take hold of your body and blood, that we might, like her, cling to the hem of your garment and receive the grace of your healing. Deliver us from pestilence, sorrow, and hardship. Protect those who must put themselves at risk during this time. In this wilderness, teach us to be your people. And bring us again to your table so that we may not only touch your hem, but commune with you. Shape us through this experience to better embody being your people for the sake of the world. Renew and restore us, O Christ, for you live and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Let us sing hymn 377, Alleluia, Jesus is Risen. I haven't mastered playing this one yet, so forgive me. Ta 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 ta. Alleluia. Jesus is risen. Trumpets resounding in glorious light. Splendor the land, heaven forever. Oh, what a miracle God has in sight. Jesus is risen and we shall arise. Give God the glory. Hallelujah. 
walking the way, Christ in the center, telling the story to open our eyes, breaking our bread, giving us glory, Jesus our blessing, our constant surprise, Jesus is risen and we shall arise, give God the glory, alleluia. Jesus the vine, we are the branches, life in the spirit, the fruit of the tree. Heaven to earth, Christ to the people, gift of the future now flowing to me. Jesus is risen and we shall arise, give God the glory, hallelujah. Weeping be gone, sorrow be silent, death put asunder and Easter is bright. Cherubim sing, O oh, grave be open, clothe us in wonder, adorn us in light. Jesus is risen and we shall arise, give God the glory, alleluia. City of God, Easter forever, golden Jerusalem, Jesus the Lamb, river of light, saints and archangels, sing with creation to God the I Am. Jesus is risen and we shall arise, give God the glory, alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Amen.